Hello everyone, how's it going? So today we're gonna to do some car detector video and we're gonna be using hard cascades in order to do some car detection. I'm gonna show you what's the demo and how the project is gonna look like and then explain of how to achieve it. So I have my OpenCV Python ready and I'm gonna run this program pythoncar.py and you will see how the car detector is working and it's, uh, it's a video of a highway and then cars are passing by and you'll see the car detector working. So before I go into the program, before I explain what it is, I do want to show you, and this is the program here, right, open up. I want to explain you what is HAR cascades. So you will see here, and I'm defining something called as car cascade, and I'm using a function from OpenCV called as cascade classifier and it's using this file har cascades car xml now what is this i do want to explain that and in order to explain that let's open up the uh, rapid pile uh, rapid object detection paper from these guys so here we have this paper opened up and it's nothing no one other than Paul Viola and Michael Jones. So what is this about basically? Paul and Michael Jones, these, these two guys back in 2001, they created this algorithm using, and they named this algorithm called as Har Cascades. What it does is they wanted to build some sort of object detector, a very fast object detector. Now. I want to take you back to 2001 where we did not have these fast computers, these GPUs, the Google drives, the Amazon web services. We did not have those powerful computers which we are available right now. So back then in 2001 using the minimalistic, the very most you know, inefficient computers, they wanted to build something that would be a very fast object detector. And in order to do that, they developed this algorithm using, it's called, the main named it as rapid object detection using cascades. And uh, this is where the hard cascades are coming up. So they basically built up a face detector and it's, it was a very efficient algorithm. So here I'll show you, uh, this image explains things very nicely. So what you see on the top layer, this uh, rectangles these two rectangles these are nothing but windows filter windows which these guys defined and what they do is this window this these two rectangles they make it flow through the whole image and they see for resemblance and try to identify whether it resembles a face image or not so the first step in that is to you know take all the images they take all positive images all images of a face for example and they take all negative images so everything that does not have a face so they have a data set which has all images of faces and they have another data set which does not have any face in it and they train the hard cascades using both these data sets what they do is they take these two windows which we have here on their paper and there is another type so they have three windows in which they make them flow through the whole frame and they see for formulae and they look for these patterns which match a face profile now what is a face profile if you notice the location this location of your face you have your eyes and then you have the middle portion which takes care of the nose. The eyes are darker than the middle portion. So if they see that pattern where there's a dark portion and a light portion in between and another dark portion, then that resembles a eye. Similarly, if they take the window and go a little down, they will see that there, is, there should be a small darker region in the middle which resembles a lip. And two nostrils so there's a pattern in every face and that's how all faces look like 
so they look for these patterns and then they also relate these patterns with other patterns that were detected so an eye pattern is detected a lip pattern is detected some ears the forehead so they take all these patterns and see if these patterns are forming something like this is a plain region it doesn't have many patterns in it so if there's a plain region and if there is an eye region a nose a lip so if they come in this sequence you know the plain eye nose and lips if they come in this sequence then it's a face of course we know that but they also trained the algorithm to match these filters so that they form a pattern and show that it's a face now the same principle can be implied for any other detector take an example of a car or any type of object that you want to do it's using this same principle of hard cascades now with, I think with that, I gave you a fundamental example, fundamental description of what hard cascades is. We will go into the program and I'll, and I'll explain what this is doing. It's a simple, very simple program. OpenCV does all the heavy lifting for us. We're just using their basic predefined functions to do our program. Now, the first step, the very first step before we go into this program is to like that button and subscribe to my channel. I mean, you don't have to, but just, just throwing it out there. So coming back to the program, we're, of course, using NumPy and OpenCV, so CV2. These are the only two libraries you need, and you're defining this variable called car cascade. This is the guy. This is the main guy which is doing all the classification. So you're defining it under car cascades, and you're using this OpenCV function cascade classifier and har cascade car.xml is the library which houses all the types of patterns which a car resembles so someone has done some hard work they collected good images of car and negative images where there's no cars and they have combined and made this classifier and they it, they computed all the patterns which a car resembles and that all information is housed in this only file so as long as you have this file you can do a car detector just like that and later on in the future I will show you how you can make your own classifier so you can detect your own objects so now we have now we are going to be using hard cascade and car XML and here I'm opening the video capture. So this is nothing but reading a video which is present in the drive. So I have this drive opened up and I'm going to be using this video. I have cars.mp4, cars.avi and there are some videos. I'm just reading one of these videos using cars.mp4 and using the video capture function from OpenCV. Once I've read and I've stored the variable in the cap folder. I'm opening this function, this while loop, which is going to loop until there is videos, until the video ends. So I'm defining it cap is opened while cap is open. So only if cap is open, meaning only if the video is running, then only I need the program to run. Otherwise, we can close the program. So as long as the video is running, we run this program and we have this function. So we are reading IMG, we are reading the image. So every video is of course considered as an image and they're reading that into this variable called IMG. This ret is nothing but a flag. It is to define the success of the reading or not. So if, if the uh, image was very um, successfully captured, then the flag is good. If it's not, then the flag is bad. So it's nothing but a flag which OpenCV helps us in identifying whether we were successfully able to read the video or a webcam. We're converting that into a gray image because that's what the cascade classifier was built on. They converted all the color images into gray because having color profile would be too much of information for their patterns and they wanted to make a rapid and fast detector. So gray images was good enough. 
so that's what we need to do we need to convert our color images to gray and we do that by using this function of OpenCV convert color color BGR to gray so we're just converting a color image to a gray scale nothing nothing too complicated in that the third step is where we call the cascade classifier which we defined in this step and we're using this function detect multi-scale gray gray is nothing but the image which we converted into the gray image and these are three two variables 1.3 and 2 so what is this the patterns the window you remember uh, initially when we went over to the page this window so we are defining the size we're giving the properties of that window so 1.3 is nothing but the scale factor of the image and 2 defines the number of neighbors in that image so what does that explain when Paolo, the Paola and I don't know how to pronounce their names Paola and Michael Jones I'm sorry for messing up their names but when they defined when they programmed or designed this hard cascades these windows what they did was they defined the pattern size the window size the how big the window should be if you're using a small window then you need to traverse the whole image that would be too much of computation so you could define the number the size of your window how big it could be how big the patterns should be and not only that it, you can also define how many other faces or how many other objects could be present in your image and that is something you would come to know through trial and error so in my video in case of my video i found out that having a scale factor of 1.3 would work best and if i sh mention that at least at least in my video i have two neighboring objects so what exactly it means is i have at least two objects two cars in the frame in one frame so it, then it understands and modifies the size of the window which is it's, which it's going to be using and just by that it it's able to detect the number of cars and that is basically defining the accuracy of the cascade classifier it i'm probably making it too complicated for you to understand for easy if you just look up the word cascade classifier and go into hard cascades wikipedia has a very nice explanation even the OpenCV website has a very nice explanation of this but it is very very interesting to understand how a simple computer a simple computer this this is a program which was run on a camera the back old Sony digital cameras the initial digital cameras they had this program running on it so there was no computational power but still this program would run like that so that is the power of this uh, algorithm and it's, it's a very good thing to appreciate once we do the cascade classifier we detect all the number of cars in this variable and it's called as cars and we want to just draw wherever the cars are present so wherever there are cars and by using x y w h which is the information of where the car is x and y is basically giving the coordinates w h is nothing but giving out how big the car is i'm just drawing this rectangle and i'm using color red 255 here that's the thickness of the rectangle this is nothing but the location and where the rectangle should be so img is defining where i should be drawing I'm going back to the color image even though I used gray image to detect them but in order to display I want to use the color that's what we are used to so I'm using IMG and I'm using I'm just sh sh showing where the rectangle should be drawn by giving these information and I'm just displaying the image by using CV to IM show now we've sh I've shown you what why this is being used in the previous video it's nothing but a weight function and it's important without that the images won't be shown on the video and ultimately once that's done we are releasing and destroying all the videos the window 
which uh, we created. So I'll run the program again just so we know how it runs. So you can see how the cars are being detected. Notice the number of cars we are able to detect in one frame. In uh, I'm able to get four or five cars in one frame, which is really good.